Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the LINEST function in Microsoft Excel. This function provides statistical output about the line of best fit for known X and Y values using the least squares method. So one practical application of this function is it helps us to predict an outcome variable when we have predictor variables. So I have these fictitious data here to the left of this worksheet. I'm going to show you using these data how to use the LINAST function. So let's say that we are looking at a counseling graduate program and we're looking at applicant scores. Right? So these would be X values, everything in green here. And we have undergraduate GPA. We have a pretest that's related to counseling knowledge and theory. And then we have an aptitude test uh, that tries to measure, attempts to measure counseling skill. So when an applicant comes in to apply to a, uh, this program, we collect the undergraduate GPA and we administer these two assessments. And then we want to be able to predict what this applicant will score on a final exam, uh, let's say three years in the future, uh, when they would be expected to graduate. And let's say this final exam is a comprehensive exam that measures counseling skills. So before we can make any prediction like this, we need to have historical data. So these data would be from actual participants, actual applicants. Uh, of course, this particular data set is fictitious, but uh, we're going to, for the sake of this demonstration, uh, we're going to treat these as real data. And let's say that we have all these known X values. We have 20 of them. You see the ID numbers, uh, 1 through 20. And then we have the actual final exam scores for the applicants who had these GPA pretest and aptitude test scores. So in order to get data like this, we have to wait three years because we collect this in the beginning and then we don't receive the comprehensive exam score, the final exam score, until the end. So now that we have data like this, we want to use it to predict the final exam scores for new applicants. So for these new applicants, we'll gather the same information. These are X values. We want to predict Y, the Y value, the outcome variable. So this is where the LINEST function uh, really has a practical application. And I want to show you how to use it using this array, this range over here. Now, what you need to understand about LINEST is it's entered as an array. So I already used some borders here to outline the size of the array, the range, that I'm going to need. Uh, but I want to explain how I came up with the size. So the output from LINEST, the way I'm going to use it, is always going to be five rows. So you're always going to need five rows. But the number of columns depends on the number of x and y variables. So you can see I have three known x's and one known y. That's how I came up with the four rows. So I find it convenient just to build this, uh, these borders, this grid in advance, so I know what size range to select to enter in the array function. So normally when we start with the function we'll just select one cell, but for this example, for LINEST, I'm going to select the entire range. I'm going to uh, enter equal sign and then LINEST, and you can see the first argument it's looking for is known Ys. So that'll be the final exam scores, the ones we know. Then it's going to be looking for known Xs. Now these can be entered all at one time, right? So we just 
let's take cell B2 and go all the way down to D21. Then it has a true or false. We have uh, B is set to is set equal to zero, or B is calculated normally. Right? B is the y-intercept, and y equals mx plus b, which is the equation for a straight line. So in this case, we're going to go with true. And then we have another true-false for the last argument. Return additional regression statistics or do not, and I'm going to return the additional regression statistics. I'm going to close the parentheses, but I'm not going to to press enter, right? Um, instead, I'm going to hold down Control Shift Enter at the same time. So Control Shift Enter, right? So this is an array formula. You can see by the little brackets at the end in the formula bar. Now these data are not labeled. I'll explain uh, what these are. It can be a little confusing at first. Uh, the first thing I like to do is address these uh, error messages. I can't just press delete to get rid of these uh, error messages because a message will come up saying that I cannot change part of the array. So just to clean it up, what you can do is you can change the font color to white. Right, so it's still there, but you won't be able to see it. So you can see it when I highlight it, it's still there. It's just the actual text color, the font color is white. So that's just a little cleaner. Now we can look at it without the distraction of those errors. So you remember that earlier I indicated the equation for a straight line is y equals mx plus b. Now when you have multiple predictor variables, multiple x variables, the equation is y equals m sub 1 x sub 1 plus m sub 2 x sub 2 and so on and then plus b at the end. All right, so in this case we have three uh, different slopes and because we have three different x variables. All right, so, the, so the last combination of slope and x variable would be m sub 3 x sub 3. Then you would have then you'd add the constant uh, b, which is the y-intercept. So what's a little confusing about the way this data comes out is that the these are the slopes here. These are the three slopes for the first three variables, but the order uh, is reversed, right? So, and I'll just put it above here. So this is actually the GPA slope here. GPA. I'm just going to center the text here. And then, of course, pretest is still the in the middle. That doesn't change. Because there's three there's three x um, values. So pretest would still be the middle. And then the aptitude test will be the first one. Right, so this would be the aptitude test. So it's a little bit confusing because it reverses the order of the slopes. Now the last variable here is the y-intercept. It's b. So I'll just label this y-intercept. Right, negative 76.919. That's the y-intercept. So I'm just going to highlight these values in a different color. Let's say uh, light green. The y-intercept, light red. And then move the focus to the second row of output. So these are the corresponding standard error values for the coefficients m sub 3, m sub 2, and m sub 1. So again, in the reverse order than what you might expect. So this does, the 0.324 does correspond to the slope for aptitude. So this is the slope and this is the standard error value.
and this last value under y-intercept is the standard error for the y-intercept. So I'm just going to highlight these three, change the color, let's say, to a shade of blue, and then change the shading here, let's say, to uh, orange. All right, so now looking at the third row. This is the coefficient of determination, r squared. And it's 0.931. Uh, it's interpreted uh, usually as a percent, so we say 93.1%. The next value is the standard error for the y estimate. So I'll just take these two values, let's make these uh, get tan. Then moving down to the fourth row, 71.947 is the F statistic, and 16 represents the degrees of freedom. So I'll fill these in. And then for the last two values here, the 4873.299, that is the regression sum of squares, and the 361.251 is the residual sum of squares. So what you can see from these data is we have run uh, a linear regression, in this case a multiple regression. We have three predictors and one outcome. And the only data we need to predict a future y value from current x values are the four values up here. So I'm going to demonstrate this by first copying the labels for the different scores. I'm going to copy and paste them down here. You see these match, a GPA, pretest, and aptitude test. So let's say an applicant comes into the program and they have a GPA of 3.2 and let's say a pretest of 37, and then an aptitude test of 81. How can we predict what the final exam score will be? How do we predict the value of y? Well, we do this by using the equation for a straight line. So in this case, I'm going to start with uh, equal sign and open parentheses. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to take the first slope and the first variable. So this gets a little tricky just because the way the output's reversed. So first will be the GPA, and then shift 8, which is the asterisk, and then the GPA slope, which is J2. All right, so that's the first combination of slope and observed score. The slope's up here, and the observed score is down here. Then we want to add another combination. We want the pretest observed score times the slope for the pretest. And then we want to add the last combination, which would be the observed score for the aptitude test times the slope for aptitude. And then at the end, we want to add the y-intercept. So based on this data that would have already been collected, an applicant that comes in with a GPA 3.2, a pretest of 37, an attitude test of 81, would score about, we could predict, 51.55. So I'm going to shorten this output a little bit to just two places to the right of the decimal. So 51.56. Now, to understand how these slopes combined with the observed scores impact the value of y, uh, consider the slope for aptitude, 1.076, and so roughly 1. So if I change the aptitude test from 81 
to 80, notice the final exam score drops by the value of the slope. Similarly, if I increase the pretest value to 38, we would expect the score to go up by 0.626. And in fact, it does. And then the GPA, now you can see that the slope of the GPA is large compared to aptitude and pretest, uh, but consider the constricted range of GPA compared to these other values of pretest and aptitude test. So in order to get the 5.683, in order to get that movement, that number of points off the final exam, we'd have to move a full point with the GPA. So it'd be all the way to 2.2 to see that deduction from the final exam. So now you can see how to practically apply the information from the LINEST function, the output. Uh, in particular, the first row of output. So it's important to note here that uh, for this example, I just had 20 cases with fictitious scores. But if you were really trying to predict something like this, uh, you'd want a lot more data. And this is the type of data that could be and normally would be gathered on an ongoing basis. So uh, if you say just admitted 20 students a year, every year you'd have uh, 20 more records and you would continue to add uh, this information as the final exam scores became available and then allow the LINEST function to calculate using all your data. So it's important to note since this is a function, even though it's an array, you can add data and the function will dynamically update. So let's say, well first of all you can change it, right? So say like for record 1015 we've already put the array function in and we realize that the value 32 should be 34. I can make that change and it's going to update the results of LINEST for me. Uh, similarly, I could insert a new record. Now first it's going to come up with an error, but if I were to populate the new record with values, you can see it'll update uh, based on that. It changed the degrees of freedom from 16 to 17 because I added one variable. So the LINEST function is fairly powerful. It's dynamic, meaning you update based on changes you make, and it has a practical and useful application in counseling research. I hope you found this video on using the LINEST function to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.